Hello RB in British Columbia, Canada. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut bifocal transition lenses for your new Ray-Ban 2140, which is the original Wayfarer, the classic, the time tested piece that will stand for eternity in color 901 which is the classic shiny black in the 50 eye size so let's go ahead and begin and by the way your husband got these for you your sweet loving compassionate generous loving husband got these for you so can he have the convertible now <laughs> that's me he didn't ask for that but this is how your frame this is your italian leather ray-ban case your ray-ban cleaning cloth i'm gonna set all that down there this is a little plastic sleeve they put on the left temple when they ship to me so the temples don't rub together during shipping. Well, if they think that's a good idea to put one on there, well, I'm going to put a second one on this side so we'll have twice the protection when I ship to you in Canada. So anyway, let's take all this off and let's go ahead and begin. These are the original heavy breakable glass G15 lenses. I'm going to remove these and put in an unbreakable lens for your frame. I just have to remove the sunglass lenses, so I'm going to point the frame downward pop out one lens, heavy glass lens, pop out the other one, set it down. And now I'm gonna take your Italian frame, put it into my, hit the start button, my Italian Santa Nelly. This is the $30,000 LE1000 patternless edger. And the stylus is gonna pop up and trace the shape of the right lens. Then it's gonna move over and trace the shape of the left. Here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy a genuine, authentic Ray-Ban frame and you will receive free, clear, single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. If you have vision insurance or flex dollars you're not using and you want a really, really cool look, you can buy from me and my receipts have my federal ID tax number on there so you can get reimbursed from your insurance company. Again, I'll be working on the Ray-Ban 2140, the original Wayfarer color 901, the classic shiny black in the 50 eye size. And this is the original made in Italy with the triple barrel hinges. And it's just the classic look. Of course, I'm wearing the new Wayfarer. This was originally made in, 19, in the 50s. This one came out in 1992. This is the Ray-Ban brand that you will never see them change. So I'm gonna put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing, yo. And Let's go ahead and pull up the shape onto the computer. Let me put in one measurement here. And just programming which lens is being cut. And this is being cut for a plastic frame. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to take your right lens out of its protective sleeve, your left lens. Now this is a block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. This is what's going to hold it in the machine. So. I need to put a double-sided adhesive sticker on here in 3M. The same people who make post-it notes make a double-sided adhesive sticker. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that on there. Pull the tape away. Let's go ahead and get your right lens. Yep, that's it. Get everything lined up perfectly. Essentially what I'm looking into is like a, a crosshairs of a scope. I have a vertical meridian and a horizontal one. And I just want to get your bifocal line leveled in there perfectly. So everything will be centered on your face. Okay, that's good. Let's do the same thing now for the left lens. Put a block in there. Put the double-sided adhesive sticker. Pull the tape away to make this side sticky. Get your lens lined up exactly where it should be. And then let's go ahead and put the block on there. So I'm going to put the block into the chuck and hit start. Of course, I don't like to call that the Chuck because I don't know the machine well enough, so I call it the Charles because I like to be formal with everything. But apart from bad humor, the first thing that's going to happen is these calipers are going to come down and it's going to trace the shape of the right side of your lens, always starting with the rear surface first, the concave surface, which is closest to your eyelashes. Then it's going to move forward and trace the convex side of the lens, which is the front surface measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel so it fits best inside the frame. The actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom left. It's that lighter color wheel that's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material. And this wheel in the center with that channel, that little valley, that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the frame. I'm going to have to close the door in a moment, but for now I just want you to see as your lens touches down on the cutting wheel. 
So, right after emailing you last night at midnight saying I had to get my beauty rest so I could look my best, it is now 343 and 87 degrees here in Durham, North Carolina. So, I said clean April Fresh, but I'm about an hour and a half away from my five o'clock shadow. And with it being 87 degrees here in North Carolina, would you take uh, musky September instead of April Fresh? Because <laughs> it'll have to do. That's why you see me in shorts. Hey, that's something you don't see, but a short Saturday. Come in on the weekends to get everything cut and ship to you now if you notice your lens is completely flat around the edges just like a nickel if i were to take it out now i could actually stand it up on the counter but in just a moment it's going to move over and have the knife-like edge being applied to the lens so your lens is starting to take shape this is the outside which is known as the temporal side I wonder if that would sit up there yeah that'll work good so RB did I mention how about your Tom, your husband Thomas and how sweet and wonderful and charming he is. Okay, I just wanted to point that out again in case I missed it the first time. Forgive me for repeating myself. Yeah, so now it's moving over to get the, the bevel placed on the lens. It's gonna slip right down inside that groove all the way around. So I've been to Vancouver, but that is the only city in British Columbia that I've been to. I did an Alaskan cruise starting in Seward. And then we ended up staying for a few days in Vancouver. Beautiful town, the Lamp District. The whole scenery as we come in, the, the foothills. Extremely beautiful place here on Earth. I'd recommend everyone to go out there and visit, but then it'd be too crowded for you guys. So take turns, don't everyone go at the same time. But here on the East Coast, I've been to Montreal a couple times, Quebec City, Nova Scotia, drove around the Cape Breton Trail. Now that's one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. So I'm gonna dry your lens off so it's not slippery. And like me, as I joke around, your lens has some rough edges, just like I do. But I'm gonna use my handstone, which is completely flat. I can put my finger on it while it's running and my finger gets warm due to the friction. But it's that friction that allows me to apply what's known as the safety bevel. I'm going to dry everything off again and then let's see if it's going to fit into the frame which it usually doesn't first time around just warning you but let's go ahead and try. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner first and then use my thumbs press down the nose it is not going in so the golden rule you can always cut more off of a lens you can never add it back on. I'm going to take about a quarter of a millimeter off and for all my American friends who have no idea what a millimeter is, it is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take one quarter of that distance off, going all the way around the circumference of your lens until it pops into the frame. It's going to skip the cutting wheel and go straight to the bevel wheel. And once we get the size of the right lens perfect, we'll switch over and we'll cut the left side. And then we're going to activate your lenses, meaning we're going to turn them dark so you can see the transition lenses going from clear to dark and then back to clear again. Okay, it is done. I will take it out. Dry everything off again. 
back to the handstone for the safety bevel. Get all that off your lens and now let's see if it'll fit. I start by tucking it in at the outside corner first and then using my thumbs I press down at the nose and there's still a little bit more give so let me take some more off. Thank you for your patience. No matter if it's a piece of wood or anything you are cutting, you can always cut more off. You can never add it back on. So that's why I always start a little bit large and work my way down. So you do have a little bit of prescription in the top of these lenses, minus one for both eyes. You have asked for a plus two bifocal power. But for anyone else watching this, I can put in any prescription lens that you want. Single vision, bifocal, non-prescription. I can do sunglass tinted lenses. I can do polarized lenses and any of the above. I can do mirror coatings on top of polarized lenses. I can do mirror coatings on top of clear lenses. For people who like to wear sunglasses indoors, it'll be absolutely clear. And for everyone who looks at you, they're only going to see the mirror coating that look like sunglasses. I do ship anywhere in the world, but I also offer free shipping anywhere in the United States. Take that back out real quick, back to the handstone, back to the safety bevel. And once again, let's try getting your right lens mounted into your Wayfarer sunglass frame. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner using my thumbs. I push down at the nose and now it snaps in. So let's go ahead and cut the left lens. Flip that over to L, which stands for not right, I believe. I'm not sure what that word is, but I believe it's not right. But I put it in, and just like before, you get bad jokes and then the lens starts tracing. <laughs> You know, they have perfected this technology. They just haven't perfected me. That's the one weak link in the chain. But hey, what are you gonna do? You know, hey, you gotta be stuck with somebody. I'm currently working on a robot to cut this, but uh, instead I spent all of my money on my Samsung Gear watch. <laughs> so, you know, money well spent. But once your left lens begins cutting, I will go ahead and continue to work on the right lens. This one will go faster now that we have the size right. All right, let's go ahead and take this block off. It is no longer needed. Pull the sticker off. Dry the lens off one more time. And I actually want to go ahead and read the prescription off of the lens. I'm getting minus one for your distance prescription there. And then let's go ahead and measure the bifocal. I'm going to raise that up. And I'm getting plus one for the bifocal. Now you add the two together. When you have minus one and then plus one, when you go from the number wheel, like where we're going to go two numbers, one's back to Plano and then back to 1.0 magnification. But I can put any power in that you want. Let me go ahead and verify that that line style bifocal is completely straight and level using my graph. That is perfect. So the lens is finished cutting and now the bevel is being applied. And RB in the future, should you ever need more prescription lenses for this frame, I can send you lenses only. And of course, in the next video, I'll show you how to pop them in. Of course, I'm doing that in this one, but I will personally do it for the next one. Although I guess you could argue I'm personally doing it for this one, but I really mean it, mean it for the next one. I only halfway mean it this time. I'm gonna cover it up when I show you popping in the left lens. That way you'll have to buy another pair for me just to see how to put it in.
I'm gonna dry the lens off. Back to the handstone real quick. Put the safety bevel on there to smooth off those rough edges. Now let's go ahead and get the left lens mounted. I'm gonna tuck it in at the outside corner first. Oh, it's fighting me, it's still alive. It's still alive. Tuck it in the outside corner first, and then using the thumbs, you just push down at the nose, and it snaps right in. So let's go ahead and take this block off. Pull that sticker off. Dry everything off. I just wanna make sure that both lenses are level in the frame. Perfect, I couldn't have done a better job if I cut this myself. Let's go ahead and inspect the prescription in the left eye. I'm getting minus one again. Check the power of the bifocal. Back to plus one, so two full diopters of magnification. Now I'm also, you're gonna be getting a cleaning cloth from Ray-Ban in the case, but I'm also gonna provide one of my own. You can always use this to clean your lenses. Now, also, this is the time that I like to remind everyone, if you get these in the mail and they're too loose or they're too tight or they sit high on one side or the other, that's because 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other. And I'm no different. I'm part of that 80%. That's why 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to go ahead and get it in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, when I take mine off, and I press down mine wobble because one ear is lower than the other, but they sit level on me. I flip them over, press down, there is no wobble. I make sure that each temple overlaps perfectly and there's the same amount of tension on each hinge, the triple barrel hinges. This is one of the strongest hinges that Ray-Ban makes. You could almost drive over this frame and you won't break it. This is one of the sturdiest and well-built frames out there. But this is what your lenses look like while they're still clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate them, meaning that I'm going to expose them to a very strong burst of ultraviolet light. In my little transitions box, I'm going to turn it on. Now it takes 30 seconds to 45 seconds for them to turn dark when you go outside. It takes about 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 to return to clear when you come back inside. Now RB, this is important. Pay attention. All transition lenses get dark on day one, as you can see. Give them two weeks, they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks until they get to their final setting, provided that you're exposing them to the sun every day. It doesn't have to be all day, just your general errands. Um, now, they'll work every day for years without any lack of performance. The only time they will not work is if you're in your car driving. The, a classic windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays so your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun, and that's what prevents transition lenses from darkening. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken. They're also temperature sensitive, meaning that when it's 90 degrees and above, they just don't get as dark as they do when it's 90 degrees and below. But I don't know how often it gets above 90 degrees where you live in Canada. But that's it. That's the first time. And don't you worry, they're going to keep darkening every time after this. But that's that. If anyone has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. RB, I hope you enjoyed watching me make bifocal transition lenses for your Ray-Ban 2140 Original Wayfarer in the color 901 Classic Shiny Black. This is the Blues Brothers frame. This is the gold standard that every Ray-Ban is compared to. But that's that. Thank your loving husband. And of course, I thank you for purchasing from me. And hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.